it in the mail, MS sex games from Japan. Collecting without fail, those shoot 'em ups, and that's the plan. He doesn't just collect them, he also codes them too. Join us and we'll go on electric adventures with you. Hey YouTube, Electric Adventures here with my channel update for November 2023. <clears throat> I'm sort of ticking by fast, it's almost Christmas. <coughs> Sorry, this is my voice. Um, probably a quick one this time. I don't have a lot of pickups and things like that, but I do have a couple. Um, the uh, neighbour whose mach two machines I've been fixing, um, I'll cover the machine fixes in a minute, um, was very grateful, dropped around his um, Dick Smith Wizard to see if I could work out what was working. He hasn't found the power supply. Um, I tried it with mine and my power supply wasn't working. So I, I need to fix my power supply and I've ordered some bits so I can make a power supply. But as well, and he said he had these other Dick Smith things in boxes and I could have them because he doesn't see himself using them. And there are two things I don't actually have for my Dick Smith uh, Wizard collection. So the Dick Smith Wizard is the name of the Creative Vision console um, as it was known in other places in the world. Um, quite the same So this is the moving keyboard. So what you had was the two controllers. Actually, I have a prop right here. So here's my... Dick Smith Wizard, right, and you put two keypads in here and you put the basic cartridge in and then you have an absolutely dreadful, um, you know, uh, membrane keyboard you could actually type up basic listings on, or, and you notice I've got two different controllers here but they're working ones, uh, you could get the full moving keyboard. And it's, it's even got its box, the box is a bit daggy but it's better than no box at all. And it's got one piece of its polystyrene. So there's the keyboard. So it turns it into a rubber keyboard. So much more like the uh, VZ200 computer, which is similar, uses similar technology. And you've got the two joystick connectors there. So you connect that there, pop that into the um, top of the unit, and put the basic cartridge in, and away you go. It turns it into a mini computer. So I'm actually really pleased um, with having that. I've never had the um, the external keyboard before, and I said it is the proper Dick Smith Wizard one in Dick Smith Wizard box. So the, the Creative Vision had one, but it would have had Creative Vision on it. And that's why I think I've got two different coloured hand controllers because probably one of them is from a Creative Vision. And the other thing which goes on the end of the console is the cassette deck. Actually, they've got a bit of a diagram how it goes on the end there. You take the end cap off, and then there's a port inside that you connect it to. Now, I haven't tested this yet, obviously, because I haven't been able to fire up my um, console. But it has the polystyrene. And there's the unit. Now, I haven't looked at the heads or the belts or anything like that yet. So we'll check that out before I use it and put a tape in. It actually looks pretty clean inside. So it just depends. The, the, the belt probably has degraded um, and might work to start with, but it'll probably step or uh, stretch. So the tapes won't run at the right speed. So I'll find out what belts I need and get some new belts before I muck around with it too much. And then maybe at some stage, once I've sort of a power supply um, issue, we can just do a bit of a video on the Dick Smith um, Wizard because it'd be nice to, to cover it again. Um, I have um, pretty much all of the cartridge games. Uh, one of them is on sort of uh, indefinite loan from a friend, um, but it is his, not mine. Um, and it's got, it's got quite unique um, set of games. Um, it's also dear to my heart because it uses the TMS nine nine one eight or two. 18 or 28 um, graphics chip, which is the similar to the MSX1, um, but it doesn't use a Z80 as the main CPU. It uses a 6502 variant. So it's actually quite an interesting uh, little console in its own right. All right, so that's that's all of the retro game pickups. I thought I'd cover. What did I do with them? Oh, moving some props around. Um, I bought two 4K Blu-rays um, this month. Um, we didn't get to see these in the pictures, we haven't been in the pictures for quite some time. Um, 
and everybody talks about doing a Barbie Heimer so we got Barbie and Oppenheimer um, but we have been a little bit time poor so we've actually watched Barbie it was getting a bit late so we haven't actually watched Oppenheimer yet I'm actually really looking forward to Oppenheimer I'm sure it's going to be fantastic in 4k um, only shows with the way my projector works I'll have to use my 4k TV um, to Working on that, I don't. I oh know this one has the Blu-ray as well, so we could w use the Blu-ray to watch on our projector, or we could watch um, 4K on the 4K TV. So we'll probably watch 4K, 4K on the 4K TV for the first watch. But really looking forward to that one, um, and we did quite enjoy Barbie. So um, and um, it was actually quite an enjoyable movie. And I said, I have four girls, so I'm used to that sort of thing <laughs> in my life. Um, now, um, I'll, so the arcade repairs. So I finished repairing the um, stand-up Arkanoid. You'll notice it is no longer behind us. Um, although I don't have the camera quite pointing, so you probably can't quite see where it was. Um, it, the um, the neighbour has taken it. He drove it down to his shack. So we have shacks. So this is holiday homes. Um, we're very lucky to have this situation here in Tasmania, where quite a few people are used to having a, a second property usually you know something small near the beach um, and here has one that's not too far away at a place called Primrose Sands um, and he took it down there on his old trailer dropped it off set it up and it's working on the way back a bolt sheared in his trailer and his trailer flipped off and smashed into a million pieces so an arcade cabinet came this close to um, after I went all the trouble fixing up to being destroyed completely but no he's actually got it down there he sent me a picture of it running um, at his shack. I'll try and remember to put a picture up here for you guys. Now his uh, Quix cocktail cabinet, I have recapped his screen. Uh, still has some slight geometry issues, so there might be a couple other components that I need to look at, but it is working. His actual arcade PCB, um, although it emits a tone when it first starts up, just outputs a straight blue picture. Uh, so that's what we're getting before. We're hearing the tone, oh, we thought the PCB was okay, um, and you're seeing a thin blue line, which is the vertical collapse. So I fixed the vertical collapse. Um, we just got um, a little bit of geometry I need to work on there. It might be one of the um, uh, might be one of the resistors or perhaps one of the um, power filter diodes. I'll go to the next stage and maybe even just a, a bit of a bit more solder on a couple of the points. But if I know, I'll show you. I'll, I'll actually get up and show you in a minute. And we're, and. Me being me and being the generous person, uh, somebody popped up in a local Facebook group and said that, oh, I've got this arcade of my husband's and it's not working and I'd like it working, you know, it'd be nice if we could have it up and running again. It's been sitting in the garage for three years. Um, it's actually a more modern cocktail, but it actually still does have a CRT screen in it. Uh, but I do believe it's reuse of an old TV and TV chassis, so probably that's been taken out of another old arcade cabinet. Um, once again, these people, I will give them a diagnosis and um, these are not, you know, total arcade enthusiasts. They just want the thing to work. So I may, in the end, do an LCD swap because I'm not, uh, I don't have any other spare tube and chassis combinations I can just give away to people and because um, I need spares for my own. Uh, but I do have some LCD screens that will fit if I can't easily fix the CRT. Not that I've had time to look at it. I've basically turned it on going, yep, there's no power going to the, to the um, other than a couple of lights on the chassis, but no power going to the tube. So um, I actually need to take it apart so I can see everything better and do some um, testing. That's as far as I've got. They've dropped it off and I've spent five minutes on it. All right, we'll, we'll stand up now and I'll just go and show you those couple of things and I'll be back in a sec. Right, so this is what I'm talking about with geometry issues. So when it warms up, it does this. If I tweak the pots on the top, it goes back to normal. So I'm actually thinking that we have drift or inside those pots, or there is another um, another thing. So as you see, it's particularly bad at the moment, but I've left it on for a few minutes while I was making the first part of the video. Make me more obvious. I mean, I've rewired it all. I haven't got the 61 yet. I just haven't had another chance to play with it. Um, and sometimes the pots in the chassis can just dry out and you just need to sit there and tweak them back and forth um, and what they're doing is yeah twisting but other than that there might be something else I need to attend to so this is this other cab it's a bit of a, an oddity it's obviously a, a more modern build 
it has like a not a Pandora's box but like a a main PC build in there um, but it actually has a full-size CRT in there um, which makes the unit very very heavy um, but yeah no light or anything no net glow <coughs> on that tube so there's something either wrong just with the power circuitry on the chassis or the monitor the actual tube is blown and it does look like an old TV tube that's been repurposed as an arcade which is what they did a lot of in Australia in the early days so we'll just have to wait and see until I get some more time to um, <coughs> You know take that apart properly um, I did say it I, I have completely rewired this with a jammer harness to make it more generic for him um, and because obviously his arcade board's not working so I'm going to put a um, 60 in one in there because once again not an arcade enthusiast they just want to play the games he's going to have a original CRT when I finish getting rid of, fixing these last couple of issues and um, a 61 will give him plenty to play and later on you never know I might be able to get his board working um, so this is running that 3-in-1 which I was using to test that scramble this 3-in-1 is a little funny so you never know I might get 61 and I won't do this because this could be the board too I don't know um, but I'm going to you know I need to put a I've got a little bit more wiring to do in the scramble cocktail it's the one sitting underneath the, you can see I've had boards out testing Got scramble super gobble frogger boards there. Um, I really do like that as a cocktail cabinet. The controls are really nice, but I just need to find <coughs> one um, square button for the player to start, and I need to replace one of the buttons on this side. If you really look closely, you can see one of the buttons is sunken because its plastic surrounds broken. <coughs> other than that, yes, I have some monitors on my other machines to fix as well. So. More arcade fixes coming up. All right, back to me on the couch. Right, back. So, um, to wrap up this one, obviously I need to get on and do some of my own, um, more of my own systems. Um, and um, yeah, they'll be the, the next candidates. The, uh, the Street Fighter, I need to recap the chassis on that one. I have uh, the old Ugly Cab, which is going to be a Space Invaders one. Obviously slight issue with that one when it's warmed up. So those two are the um, front and center to be fixed. The sit down scramble's really good, just got to work out what I'm going to have in that board wise. And uh, I'll find one more one more button and, or two buttons really, I've got one button missing and another button that's broken, so I need to get a couple of buttons. So and then on homebrew stuff, so my main focus has been finishing off the last bits and pieces of my new book, Classic Game Programming for the NES. Um, it's been selling very well in the early access program. Um, it was number one in October, I think I said that in my October video, and it's still being, uh, still stayed in the top ten um, in November, uh, and ticking along nicely. We've been going through the final things you do to get it ready for production, which is when it goes to print. Um, I have written all of my front matter, and um, I'm very um, blown away. Um, I contacted a few people to see whether they'd be interested in doing the forward and the Oliver Twins in the UK and specifically Philip is who I've been talking to. I've never conversed with Philip before but he seems a very nice person and he and his brother Andrew have written an absolutely magnificent forward. Um, you can see they still have a massive amount of passion in programming and a lot of love uh, for the uh, um, Nintendo Entertainment System as well. So um, can't thank them enough for doing that forward and it's a really great addition to the book. So the books, in those final stages of preparation, the final review, um, peer review closed um, what, one day ago. So I'll get some comments and edits I need to do that and then it's pretty much hands off and then it goes off and gets printed. So the physical book, probably by the time they've done all that, it takes a couple of months, be sometime in February. I'm very much looking forward to getting hold of the physical book and uh, you know continuing to um, uh, sell it to you guys out there so look forward to that um, now the other thing uh, Sydney Hunter and the Caverns of Death um, we've had another really good test run we really are down to the last little bits um, I have a couple more uh, lava levels to check in the later levels and we've just got a couple little you know you can uh, end up half in a wall on a couple of screens um, and other than that it's actually playing uh, pretty solid so really really in the last stages of that game and I hope to before Christmas have <coughs> a final 
beta out there uh, for a f once more test uh, all the way through just to make sure that we haven't missed anything and then it'll be ready to go um, and that's also why I haven't been doing any um, updates on my other homebrews because I want to get things finished off so the book finished off Sydney Hunter and Cameron's Death is the next thing to focus on and then I have about a half a dozen <coughs> homebrew games for the MSX Spit video and Coleco because I do triple releases um, that I'm working on and I'm actually working on another collaboration project with um, another gentleman in the UK um, and that's another new game, but I hope I'll, I'm going to get that game a fair the way through before I show anything about it. Um, now, as far as um, modern games and playing, I've been still been playing Diablo 4. I really like that. Um, in actual fact, I was travelling away and I missed playing Diablo 4, so I actually electronically bought Diablo 3, and it came with Diablo 2 as well for the Switch. So I I do say that I'm a Diablo addict. Um, so, so that's pretty much all I've been playing in the modern. Once again, um, Baldur's Gate is another game that is very attractive to me, but at the moment you can only buy an online version, and I'm still not ready to let go of my physicals yet. So when there is a physical edition <coughs> of Baldur's Gate um, 4, I'll, I'll buy that. Um, but you can't seem to get... I have not seen one available in Australia. So we'll wait and see with that. Um, and things go. So lots of videos to come up, um, more Atari 2600 gameplays, the Atari 2600 Plus has really gotten me in the mood for playing some Atari games. Um, I've got more of those recorded um, and, uh, and, and edited so they'll come out over the preceding days so you should see fairly regular videos for me. Um, we have another a package that just arrived uh, just the other day but I haven't opened it yet and <coughs> that's um, uh, for the uh, some more cartridges for the Evercade, sorry my brain was having a fail there uh, so looking forward to playing the um, two cartridges that are in that so lots on the go and I do know there are some more homebrews on the work making their way from across the world over to here and um, I'll always give them a good play and do a video on them alright I'm Electric Adventures thanks to all my subscribers thanks for watching and I'll catch you next time